This music, this Bach, is switched on Bach. The Walter Carlos recording that introduced electronic music to the world and made Moog a household word. Robert Moog developed the Moog synthesizer. Today, he lives and works beside his own Bach in North Carolina. Two decades after the synthesizer and switched on Bach sparked a musical revolution that almost nobody noticed. I went around asking experimental musicians, where do you think this will go? What do you think of this idea? And they said, well, it's all very interesting, but what else are you going to do for a living? He made his living making things that helped musicians make music. He's still at it. Keep busting. We're working on new types of keyboards, new types of controls, new types of of instrument configurations, instrument shapes that will enable musicians not just to play these notes that are being electronically produced, but actually control and shape them the way, say, a violinist or a singer controls and shapes every note that he makes. Electronics change the shape of the musical world. Moog says it's more democratic than it used to be when he says a composer was considered something special. Today, uh, if you want to compose music, any kind of music, all you need is a couple of synthesizers, a computer, and a, and a mixing, little mixing board, some sort of a recorder, in one corner of your bedroom or your den or your garage, and you can make music that is professional quality. But making music today is a lot more expensive than it was back when Robert Moog played the piano with a little band in the Catskills. All I had to my name uh, was a, a fake book of songs that you had to be able to play. Uh, today it's much harder. Uh, today a keyboard player needs thousands of dollars worth of equipment in order to be competitive. And he also has to write original music as well as play other people's music in order to be competitive. Times have changed for the professional musician. They're about to change for the amateur. There are CDs coming out now that are, that, uh, are interactive CDs. Uh, they contain music, but they also contain information that, that enables the person listening to change the music or contribute his own line of sound. Back when I was a kid, uh, there were records called Music Minus One Records. And I guess they were interactive because you played along with them. Uh, the Music Minus One CD of the future will be a lot more sophisticated. It will actually respond to the way you're playing. For instance, if you play one part in the music and the CD is playing the rest, and if you play a little bit softly or, or slowly, uh, the CD will match your speed and your loudness. Robert Moog, a pioneer who says he doesn't think of himself as a pioneer at all. Just a guy who picked up where others left off. I guess I'm still uh, toward the leading edge of, of development, and I intend to continue there. I, I find it an interesting process, a rewarding process, to be developing new things in conjunction with musicians. Uh, the end product I'm not so concerned about. I'm not the sort of person who, who keeps a whole museum of accomplishments. In fact, I get rid of instruments as quickly as I design them. Probably just as well. If Robert Moog relished the past, he might not be working so hard on the future. A future in which electronic musicians will be able to shape their music as subtly as the classical masters did. A future in which all of us will become masters of the music we hear in our homes. David George, CNN, Future Watch.